what is going on guys welcome back to the channel and thank you for watching another video as you can see behind me i have my jetta tdi sport wagon and we're going to be doing a video on this car today so once again for some of you guys that don't know this is my 2012 mark 6 jetta tdi sport wagon this is my daily driver it's been an amazing car and i've owned this for a little over two and a half years now so from the outside, you guys could tell that the car looks relatively stock, and that is because it is pretty much stock. There are a couple little things done to it here and there that I'll go over in today's video. Aesthetically, besides the tinted windows and the OEM roof racks and the roof box, there really isn't that much done to the outside of the car, but I'm going to be trying to change that soon. It is super dirty under here, but the only like performance mod, I guess, if you want to even consider that, is this cold air intake by InGen, which sounds awesome, by the way, and also this car has a Kerma TDI tune on it. So you guys are probably wondering why I'm making a video about this car. So I want to make this car a little more fun to drive. I want to make this car look a little better than it does already. I personally love wagons and I know a lot of you guys do too. And the fact that it's a diesel and it's super hard now to come by a TDI manual, the Mark 6 generation, it's getting really hard to get these cars and find them out in the dealer market or private sales. And people are asking a crazy amount of money for these cars. So I really want to make this car look a lot nicer and I want it to drive a lot better and I want to make it more of like how I would modify any of my other cars. So like I said in a previous clip, I've owned this car for a little over two and a half years now and I've put somewhere between like 25,000 and 30,000 miles on this car and I've literally had zero problems with this car and this car has been tuned honestly like a month after I bought it. So most of the life that this car has been with me has been tuned and I've had like I said almost no problems with it and realistically as well, um, it's been a great car. I still get great fuel mileage with it and honestly the only issue that I can think of from the top of my head that I've had with this car is that P2015 code which is the intake manifold runner flap thing uh, that most of these cars do get and I did get the diesel geek uh, bracket that I did do in another video that I could link down below if you guys need it let's say you do have that code but that's the only thing that I can think of that's gone wrong with this car in my time of ownership. So one question that I've noticed a lot that has been coming up recently in my TDI videos of this car is that uh, people want to know how well the car is with the tune on it how reliable the car is if any if it you know breaks down how the fuel mileage is i'm getting a lot of those questions and being that i've had this car two now for over two years and like i said i've put like 25 to 30 thousand miles on this car with the tune and i've had no problems i want to go over my experience with ownership of this car and how the tuned life has been with this tdi so i have my gopro up on this new mount that i got for the headrest which is really cool we're going to be doing some driving videos today with this car and i'm going to be going over everything that has to do with this car in my two and a half years of ownership all right guys so now we're going to be driving the car i'm going right now we're going to be going over a lot of questions that i've seen in my comments regarding my tdi videos so number one the biggest thing that comes up all the time is reliability while the car being tuned now like i said i've put 25,000 to 30,000 miles on this car and almost all of those miles have been with the tune on it i tuned this car about I would say a month after I bought it. And I've had absolutely no problems with the car. The car runs great. It still pulls strong like it did the first time that I put the tune on the car. Uh, overall, I have no complaints about it. Currently, the car is turned by Kerma TDI. They're a great tuner. Uh, I highly recommend them if you're going to keep your emission system, which now with everything going on with the EPA, I kind of recommend you do just so that you don't face any kind of problems. But my car is 100% stock emissions. And like I said, it's on a Kerma tune, which they do not provide tunes for deleted vehicles at all. If you're looking on a review for cars that are deleted, you're probably gonna have to go over to uh, like Stevenson Tuning or Malone Tuning, which those are also pretty good companies uh, that I also recommend if you're gonna go down that route. But just like I said, keep in mind with the whole emissions thing that uh, it could cause a problem in the future for you. Another good question that I've been getting is fuel mileage. So personally, I see a lot of people complaining about the Mark 6s that they cannot get a great uh, mile per gallon on their cars. Ever since I bought this car, after I tuned it, I've had absolutely no problems with my MPGs. This car still gets on a tank like around 550 miles from fill up uh, until about the light comes on. So I'm not sure the problem that people are having. Mind you, I don't drive this car like crazy as in I don't put my foot down all the time. It is my daily, like I said, and I do mix in a lot of highway and city driving. So I'm not sure the issue that people are having regarding their really low um, miles per gallon on 
on these cars because I seem to average pretty well. And if I do a trip on the highway and do mostly highway miles, I can get up to 650 miles on a tank on this car. And that's including the roof racks and the roof box. So I'm sure, and now I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty positive that I can get close to 700 miles on a tank without the roof box and the roof racks, but that's just me. This car has been honestly the best daily driver that I could have asked for. It's absolutely amazing, like I said from the beginning, that this car gets amazing fuel mileage. Uh, besides that, it's super comfortable. It rides really nicely. There's a lot of space here in the interior. Um, there's a lot of room for everybody. The hatch for the trunk part is really big. If you put the back seats down, everything uh, gives you a lot of room to put a bunch of stuff. I put so many different things in this car from tools to shelves to big boxes that just fit in this car. And honestly, this car's never let me down. This car's never broken down on me. I haven't had to do much maintenance wise. Pretty soon I'm gonna be doing a timing belt on this car and the water pump because it needs to be done. But the only thing that has gone wrong on this car, well, there's two things was, like I said before in the video, the P2015, which is that intake manifold runner flap issue that these cars seem to have, but I put the Diesel Geek bracket on the car and that code has not come back. This car doesn't even have a check engine light. I don't remember the last time the check engine light came on. Again, it might have been when I had that P2015 code. Uh, so it's been about a year since I did that uh, maintenance for this car. So it's been about a year since I did that. So this car has had no check engine lights. It recently passed inspection two months ago or three months ago. So this car has been really solid and good to go. The other thing that went wrong on this car was, I don't know if I ever mentioned this in a video, but my slave cylinder went bad on this car. So I had to do a whole new clutch on it. And the thing with these cars is that the slave cylinder is internal in the transmission. So when the slave cylinder goes bad and it starts to leak or it ruptures, it's gonna coat your entire clutch with the flywheel and pretty much it just destroys it. So since you gotta pull the transmission out to be able to do the slave cylinder, it just makes sense. And especially since this car had over 100,000 miles and it was still on the original clutch with the tune and it never had a problem with it, by the way. The clutch never slipped when I was tuned and it was the original clutch with like 107,000 miles. For me, it was just better to do the clutch while the slave was in there and do everything in one shot because if you don't do the clutch and you reuse stuff and you do the slave and then your clutch starts to give you issues, you're gonna have to re-pull the transmission and then you're gonna be paying double the labor. Now, I'm gonna be honest, future plans for this car, uh, when I first got it, I said that I wanted to do a lot with it. I was gonna lower it, I was gonna make it look really nice. And then I started to play around with other cars like the Miata, the Mini, then my S3. And honestly, just because this was my daily driver, I really couldn't justify dumping money into it while I was spending money on my other cars, which are you know meant for fun. Like the Miata was a fun like back road car. The Mini was a stance car that still handled pretty well. The S3 is a pretty quick, fast car that I like to take the, to the track and have fun with. And there's a lot of performance stuff done to it. And I'm not even close to being done with that car. So dishing out the money for this car as well, I feel like I really couldn't justify it. So that's the reason why I kind of stayed away, but now I do want to start doing a couple of little things to this car to make it more of my own and give more of my flavor and taste to modifying cars like I usually do. As far as future mods, again, I did say this a few years ago when I got the car, but I'm definitely going to lower it a little bit. I'm probably just gonna do some H&R springs just to give it a good like inch to inch and a half drop all around. And then I'm gonna do some wheels on the car because I feel like it'll look a lot nicer with some uh, decently looking, good looking wheels on the car. Now, what I'm stuck on is I'm not sure if I wanna do some kind of cast rotiform wheel, something along those lines, or if I wanna do more of like an OEM plus. I really like the way the Prisma wheels look on these cars, the OEM Volkswagen, I think they come is it a Tiguan or on the Atlas? I'm not 100% sure. I'll put a picture on the screen right now of the Prismas, but I really like the way these wheels look on the wagons. And I really, really think they would look great on this car. So I might consider doing some, some like a OEM plus kind of look on it. Another thing that I really want to do is uh, all the interior lights on this car and do some LEDs because all of these like orange bulbs are just not it. So. I would like to do some LEDs here in the interior. I do have LEDs in my footwell, but I want to do all the lights inside the car. So that's another little thing that I want to do. 
Uh, besides the wheel suspension and the lights, there's not much more I want to do. One big mod that actually I do have coming for this car that's coming on the way, I have a new head unit coming for the car, which is the RCD 330, which is an upgrade that a lot of people in the MK5 and MK6 world do, which I really do like this infotainment system, being that this car is from 2012, almost 10 years old now. This still does really well. It has Bluetooth. It's very responsive. It has everything that I need. It's touchscreen. It looks nice. But I really got spoiled by the S3 with the Apple CarPlay and the really nice infotainment and the luxury that the S3 has that I wanted a little upgrade in this car being that I spend most of my time in this car because it is my daily. I would like to have a nicer infotainment system. So I'm getting the RCD 330. That should be coming in next week. I'm going to be doing an install video on that. It's actually pretty simple and it's a mod that I'm going to try out for a couple of days. Then I'll get back to you guys so that uh, you can hear my opinions on it because I think it's a mod that a lot of people love and I'm sure I'm going to love it as well because Apple CarPlay nowadays is a must. I know it's like first world problems, but I'm so used to using it in my Audi that I don't have it here. It's kind of annoying and the screen on the RCD 330 is bigger and overall, like I said, it just gives the interior more of that modern 2021 look that everybody loves. So I really do recommend you hopping into one of these TDIs. Uh, it really doesn't matter either if you get a Golf, if you get a regular Jetta sedan, if you get the wagon, get something if you can find it because right now these cars are going for a lot of money and believe it or not, I can sell my wagon right now for around what I paid for it more than two years ago, maybe even a little bit more after putting all those miles on the car so the market for them are crazy right now and another thing too if you opt to get a manual try and get one just because it is so hard to find these manuals right now um, a lot of them are dsg that are on the market but still regardless finding a tdi at the mark six is really hard at the moment all of the buybacks that the dealers did during the diesel gate those are all out of the dealers now so before when i was looking for these cars there they were everywhere there were golfs at all the dealers there were jettas at all the dealers there was a decent amount of wagons around me too i ended up getting this one because it was the best deal for the mileage which is why i chose this uh, car instead of all the ones that i found but now when you look i put at least for my area 500 miles away and maybe like 10 of them will come up so when before you can have like 80 or 90 of them pop up in a 500 mile radius or more so that just goes to show that there are not that many that are out for sale and the people that are selling the private party are asking for a lot too which they should because that's just the way the car market is right now at the moment so anyways guys that's going to conclude the video hopefully you guys enjoy like i said before I definitely recommend you guys, if you can find one of these, to buy one because they are not easy to come by anymore like they used to be. And they're an awesome daily driver. You can get five to 600 miles on a tank of these. And with the way fuel prices are right now, it's crazy. So the more money you can save, the better. And this car, like I said, over the past two and a half years has been absolutely awesome. It has never left me stranded. It's still fun to drive. I have a manual, so it makes it even better. And honestly, Again, I don't think I'm gonna get rid of this car anytime soon. It makes the perfect daily driver for me. It has a lot of space. And again, like I said, it's still fun to drive. I think wagons look cool. I really like them. And I really want to start modifying this car a little more than what I have in the past couple of years, which has actually been pretty hard for me not to modify it. But I just had so many other things going on and other projects that I was working on that I couldn't justify putting any money into this car uh, rather over the other cars that I was working on. So just gotta keep that in mind. But anyways, Hopefully you guys enjoy the video again. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day.